Good morning everyone. It is Tammy and we are going to spend the day doing freezer meals. So I'm going to make freezer meals for my son who has recently gotten his first apartment and it's him and his girlfriend. So I am going to put together some freezer meals for them. Some of these recipes you may have seen before on my channel. Some you may be new, but um, I will try to put all the ingredients at least down below uh, for each meal. I'll have to do that so it may be a little minute. Um, and yeah, I'm kind of excited about doing this. The execution is never quite as fun to get started as the preparation for me. So I am kind of going, oh, I don't want to go to the grocery store. Because usually what I do for my groceries is I do the Kroger click list. Do -do 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 go and pick them up but this time I decided to actually go to the grocery store and I'm going to the Walmart marketplace that we have close to me close to my house and the reason I decided to do that is because sometimes they have different stuff than is online and uh, I know that they have this package that has a roast and potatoes and carrots and onions already in it and a uh, seasoning and it's really good so I thought you know what I'm just gonna go ahead and go there and get that because uh, I know that that is really good and I know that we all like it so that will probably be I could probably cut that in half and have a meal for us which I can have in the crock pot making while I make my meals and have it for them too so uh, we shall see how it all works out, but I am getting ready to go to the grocery and then I will go home and I will do the prep and there's I really made them very easy meals like some of them are Like almost no effort and uh, So this is like really good for college kids or for young kids or for people who just don't want to I mean Honestly, all of the meals are really good. Some of them are not as healthy as others but uh, you know, you can substitute. If I'm using something that you don't like, please use what you like. If I'm using something that you don't uh, think, you know, you think that fresh would be better than frozen or canned or whatever, then by all means, use what you want. This is just recipes and ease to get it all started. And you can be you and please customize it to your liking and, um, you know, please don't leave any negative comments about how unhealthy they are or whatever. I mean, I know people will do that anyway, but you know, you don't have to eat it and you're not invited to my house for dinner. So <laughs> even though I'd love you and I would, if, if you're nice, I would love to have you over. But if you can't be kind, be quiet. Mm -hmm. It's a good a philosophy for life. And I will um, be back. I'm at the grocery. Okay, so I just got finished with the grocery. I spent $157, which is actually a little less than I expected. I got tons of things and I will show you. So I didn't tell you guys earlier, but this is going to be a video from start to finish. So obviously getting the groceries and it's gonna be a little long-winded sometimes and you can fast forward, do what you need to get to the recipes if that's the only part you're interested in. But some of you guys, I'm kind of thinking that this might be good for people who are brand new to cooking, brand new to shopping, not knowing how to even make a menu or a grocery list or whatever. And um, what I like to do is to plan out some of the meals that I want to make. That is the best thing to save money, to get what you need, and to have things for meals. I remember when I first started living on my own, I would go to the grocery store and I would feel like I spent $100, let's say, or whatever, and I'd come home and I didn't have anything to make. Like I would just buy whatever I saw and I wouldn't go with any plan and I'd just be like, oh, this looks good. Oh, we can have some SpaghettiOs. Oh, we can have some chicken. But I wouldn't like plan meals with them and then I'd get home and I wouldn't know what in the world to make. So that's a big mistake for a lot of newbies. And um, 
and it's easy to do, especially when you go in the grocery store and it's a little bit overwhelming um, just because there's so many things and there's so many things that you might want to try that you haven't tried before. And that's one thing I do love about the click list, which I don't know if everyone is familiar with that, but what that is, you order your groceries online and then you just go to the grocery store and pick them up and they bring them to you and put them in your car. That's kind of nice because then you're shopping to your list and you're sticking to your list. It does cost cost money at some places. I know my grocery store charges $5 to do the click list, but that means I don't have to do any of the grocery shopping. I don't have to look around the store. I don't have to find things that I didn't intend to get uh, because that is definitely something that I do. And just that will save me the $5 every time. So I don't have any problem spending $5 to do that most of the time. Today I wanted to get that roast and I know that roast isn't on the click list. Like there's some things that you can't get on the click list and I wanted to uh, kind of pick out my own chicken and kind of compare prices and because I was really trying to go less expensive because I'm not only doing this for me, I'm doing it for my son. Well actually I'm really doing it for my son but I know that I'm going to get extra out of it too but um, so it is for me as well but it's mostly for my son and uh you know, it's expensive. I'm buying groceries for myself already. So to actually have to buy more and make all these meals for them, I wanted to make sure that, you know, I was frugal. So I did buy some generic brands. If I know that they taste as good or the same or better or whatever, like I can't tell a difference a lot of times between the generic brand and the name brand. So if that's the case, then I will go with the generic. If I know that there's a difference and I feel like, oh no, I really like this brand, then I, bu I buy the brand that I like. So I guess in one way I am brand specific in the fact that if I know I like it, then I'll get that. Like, um, for example, my Brooks Chili Hot Beans or Chili Beans. I use the Chili Mild. My mom always used the Chili Hot. I know that I love the Brooks Beans. Those are my favorite for chili. So I get those every time. Um, if I want fancy tomato sauce or something like that because I do know that there is a difference in tomato sauce but there's not a huge big difference enough for me to when I'm just making whatever to I'll just buy ragu or prego or whatever actually today I think I bought ragu and prego because I don't really know the difference one of them was chunky one of them wasn't I thought all right I'll have a little bit of chunk in it and a little not so you know just do what you want so I just kind of wanted to give you that heads up so that you'll know what to expect. So I am going to um, unload everything and then I will show you what I bought and then we will get cooking. All right, so I have all the groceries out. I don't have them sorted yet, but that will be my next step. So right now I have, I'm just gonna show you guys what I got. I got some apple slices. This is just for fun and for us to have here. I'll probably share some with my son though. Um, this is for a meal. This is for a, a treat. Um, this is for lots of meals and lots of meals. So I got big things of cheese because it's cheaper to do it in bulk. I also got uh, ready-made pizza crusts. I love these crusts. These in my opinion are as good as the Pillsbury ones. And I use this for the chicken pot pie. I got some thick cut bacon. I do like the thick cut. I also got some chicken breast tenderloins. These are my favorites to use. Um, I got some Italian mild sausage, and you can see that it was on sale. So I sometimes look for that too. And I got some ground chicken also on sale. And another thing that was on sale was this flat iron steak and these chicken thighs. I wasn't going to use chicken thighs, but because these were on sale, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna get those. So I got those, and then I got an extra thing of ground turkey, and I got some country sausage. I also got low-fat cottage cheese, some ricotta cheese, I think that's part skim too, some sour cream, I already said that. I got some sliced mozzarella cheese, that's gonna be for their Italian hoagies. I got a beef roast. I love this. This is what I was talking about. It comes with all the vegetables, so it's really handy. Um, let's see. I got some Texas toast, and there are eight slices in this, so this will be enough for them to have for two meals. I got some shrimp. They didn't have the tiny shrimp, which is what I usually like, so I just got the extra small. I got two packages of chopped onions. This is going to save me time today. 
I actually like them in a, any normal day, but um, it's really nice. So one package is two medium onions. So I went ahead and just got two packages. I got a package of chopped spinach. I thought I would use this for the chicken fettuccine alfredo. And I know I haven't told you guys what the menu is yet, but I will. Um, I got some pepper and onion blend. And I got three things of broccoli florets. And then over here, I got some rice. I got some ready to make uh, jasmine rice. I got two of those. One of those is going to be for here. I got some Spanish rice. I got a package of blueberry muffins. I might make those for them. A package of bacon bits. And these are the real bacon pieces. I like that best. Another thing of jasmine rice. This is for here. Um, some fun pasta. I got some uh, freezer bags, gallon sized. I got some mustard because I needed that for here. I got some soy sauce. I got some syrup, and I need soy sauce for a recipe, but I figure that I will let them have whatever I don't use. And same, with, well, the syrup isn't for a recipe, that's just for them. And I needed some cocktail sauce. I got some oven-ready lasagna noodles. Those are my favorite kind, the oven-ready. I have not tried the Great Value brand. I um, only knew that there was one brand, and that's what I've always used, but when I saw these, I thought I'd give them a try. I mean, they're just pasta, so I don't know how they'd be bad. I got two chilies. Um, one original and one mild. And then I also got a fajita I dropped, uh, seasoning mix. I got some chili ready tomatoes. You can guess we're having some chili. I got two things of spaghetti sauce, a prego and a ragu. I got a beef broth and a chicken broth. I got some creamer for myself. I got some milk chocolate brownies in case I can make those for them. If not, I'll just give them the box. Um, I got two cans of cream of chicken and two cans of cream of mushroom. I got a small thing of green beans and a small thing of corn, and I got a large can of chicken. And I got the largest can I could find of the veg all. It's 29 ounces. I got a large Alfredo sauce. I got my Brooks Chili Hot Beans, Chili Ready Tomatoes, Diced Tomatoes, a big one, some hoagie buns some oyster crackers for the chili, and then I just got some miscellaneous, these were at the Dollar Tree, so I found those the other day, but some storage bags, some other parchment paper, I think that's parchment paper, oh no that's not, it's slider bags, whoops, and Reynolds wrap, uh -huh. so that should do it, with some foiled containers to put things in, and I'm going to go ahead and figure out my plan and get started. I forgot to mention that I also got a couple things of paper plates, one for here and one for my son, and some cat food for my cat, and some milk bones for my dog. So um, I spent $157, I think, but I got things that I needed for the house as well. Within this bill is the oil thing from the Dollar Tree, and um, but this is my receipt from Walmart, and it was $157.05. So, I don't know. I thought that was pretty good. And our menu, or the meals that we're making, are these. So, chicken bacon, bacon ranch with roasted broccoli, chili with crackers, chicken alfredo with garlic bread, Italian sausage, lasagna with garlic bread, beef and broccoli with rice, tater tot casserole, roast, chicken pot pie with salad, and chicken fajita bake. And there's also probably some beef stew that I didn't include on here. And then I also had a little sheet for them on how to make everything. So this is pretty easy for them, hopefully, to like know that this is what they have to do to the chicken bacon ranch. And then they enjoy. So let's get started. Okay, just so you guys see from start to finish, I am going to combine this ground turkey with this ground chicken. And I am just going to brown it in this. And I'm also going to use a pot, maybe this one, to boil some pasta so that's what i'm going to do to get started and right now i'm also dividing all the food into meals but i wanted to go ahead and get this browned so that you guys can see that so here we go with that so i also added some chicken um, tenders into a bowl of, or a pot that I'm going to also boil. 
and let those cook. I have a few left in this bag just because it was a big bag. And I'm just going to put these in my freezer because I don't think I need these yet. So I'm just getting the meat browned. I'm not going to put any seasoning in it yet because I'm going to use it for different things. And I'm going to wait for the uh, water to boil. My oven is clean. I'm going to wait for the water to boil and add the pasta to that. I will just let this cook for a little minute. Okay, so I took the meat, most of it out, um, probably about two thirds of it out, and that leaves me with probably a pound. And I'm going to add the chili seasoning to that. I bought two chili seasonings, but I'm really not sure if I need to. One just might be enough. And because it was chicken and turkey, I left most of the I didn't drain it very much. I left most of the liquid in there, but I am going to add some more water. And I also have a sink full of hot soapy water so that I can wash my dishes as I go. And I just want to bring this again back to a boil so that that seasoning will get all in the meat. And when you have something that needs to be thick or thickened, it only thickens when it is boiling. So you have to bring it to a boil and then let it cool to make it as thick as it's gonna be. If you don't bring it to a boil, it won't get as thick as it could. I'm trying to figure out what of these meals I want to have for dinner. It's crazy. They're all sounding so good right now. I kind of think that I want chili. And if that's the case, then maybe I'll add a little bit more of the beef into here. I know I need beef for tater tots. Checking to see what my menu is. this beef or turkey whatever to this and I am going to go ahead and add the other chili seasoning and as you can see it is boiling around again, bring it to a boil, and I really need another pot to um, put my chili in, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave that, I think, in here until my pasta is done, and then we'll assemble some other things while we're waiting for the pasta to get done. And that water is boiling, so I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of salt to it. and a drizzle of extra virgin olive oil just so that it won't, the pasta won't stick. And I found this cute radiator pasta. Hopefully you can see that. And this is 16 ounces. For the chicken alfredo, I'm sure I don't need all 16 ounces, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and cook all 16 ounces. 
and I'll just give them the leftover pasta, whatever that is. So this is it boiling as well. So I'm going to turn the, top, the front oven off. And this is my meat for my chili. And I don't know if I have enough water in there. Stir the pasta around a little bit. I don't know if there's enough water in the pasta but I'm gonna let it cook down and see what happens and then I have the chicken in here and it is getting warm so it will um, I just want to cook the chicken breast this looks so yummy it smells so yummy too with all of the chili so I could add my ingredients for the chili in here but I'm just afraid that it will get too full so I'm not going to worry about it although I am going to add some onion so I have this chopped onion. And I'm going to add, it says that this is equivalent to two onions, so I'm gonna add one onion. So I'm just gonna pour about half of it in there. And if you like green pepper or any of that in your uh, chili, you can add that too. And I do. And I have this pepper and onion blend that I purchased and showed you earlier. So I'm going to add a little bit of that to get some of my peppers in. Woo. I would normally chop these for my chili, but honestly, I don't even care. And again, this is going to make two nice um, family-sized meals because my son will eat a lot of chili, and I'm counting on them to have some leftovers, so this will be enough for me and Dennis and Chloe and Alex, and then Chloe and Alex again for sure. Need to keep an eye on that since it's low in the water. And another thing I have ready for myself is a nice beverage. Ah, that happens to be strawberry, orange, banana, like crystal light. It's so good. I get it from Kroger and it comes in these packages. It's like the Kroger brand. Really good if you guys are, like that kind of thing. Well, while that is cooking, we can go ahead and do the chicken bacon ranch meal. So I'm gonna bring you over somewhere else and we're gonna do that while this pasta is cooking. Okay, for the chicken bacon ranch, I'm going to just put it in a foil container for them. And I got these again at the Dollar Tree and they came three for a dollar. I thought that was pretty good and it has the lids. And the foil container. So I just need to get one foil container out for this. I think. So that's over there. Put those over there. And I'm going to write on here that it is chicken. bacon ranch and I have the instructions but you know what I'm just now thinking that maybe I should write bake 450 degrees uncovered 
for 45 minutes. And that's if it's thawed. If frozen, bake 450 degrees for 30 minutes, uncover, bake 30 to 40 more. All right, I'm going to put a smiley here and a <laughs> that says yum, you can't hardly tell, maybe I should fill it in. I'm a dingbat. And then I thought that they could serve this with roasted broccoli. So I'll get that ready too. But first let's do this. And I have that written down on my thing. So I'm just taking my spray. You could use Pam or whatever. I just use one that I can refill with oil, with olive oil. And I do have my trusty Lysol wipe here because I don't want to contaminate. I hate raw chicken. Ugh. So I am going to try to carefully put that in there without touching it. Probably a good idea to have your trash can lid open while you're doing this too. And I'm gonna have to touch it. Ugh. If there's extra fat that you wanna cut off, you can. So I'm gonna get up and wash my hands after I do, do this. So I won't be able to stop, unfortunately, the thing, cause I don't wanna touch the camera. So this is going to be just a second and I will be right back. Pasta. All right, so now that I have the chicken down, I need to open the bacon too. Let me see if it has an easy open. Why don't they make this thing, this stuff easy for us? Oh, maybe they do. Ugh, nope. Okay, well, I will just cut it. And I like the thick cut bacon, but you can use whatever kind you want, obviously. Okay, so now I'm going to take some salt and pepper and just salt and pepper the chicken thighs. And you can even use breasts. Actually, that's what the recipe I think called for, but they had this, like I said, on sale and it looked good, so. And then you wanna put about, <coughs> I don't know, a tablespoon or so on each of these chicken portions. And it doesn't have to be pretty. <coughs> Ooh, that pepper made me cough. So I didn't buy the ranch, I already had that in my stash, so that's something that I already had. And then I'm going to take this bacon and I'm going to take a piece per thigh, I think, and just fold it over the thigh. If you had chicken breast, you might need two pieces. But this is a super easy recipe and I actually think I did it on my channel too. Um, 
It's so easy and it's so good. <coughs> Man, I still have that tickle in my throat. So I will have some leftover bacon, which doesn't make any sense, does it? Leftover bacon? It's crazy, but I will definitely use it here. So I will put that in a zippy. And that is that, and then I'm gonna cover it with cheese, but I'm gonna wash my hands again and stir the uh, uh, pasta. I'll be right back. All right, so the pasta is actually about done. I am going to open up this big bag of cheese, because again, it's <clears throat> cheaper to buy in bulk. And I'm just going to cover it with I'm eyeballing it. I'm going to say it's a cup and a half or two cups of cheese. My family loves cheese, so that will be good. <clears throat> and that is one meal ready to go. I'm going to put this down on top of the foil side down, so hopefully it'll be non-stick. I'm gonna put here serve with roasted broccoli. And that's nice because the broccoli, you can roast at the same temperature that you cook this in and it works out perfectly. So there is our chicken bacon ranch ready to go. Now I'm gonna to tend to the pots. All right, so <clears throat> the pasta is done and honestly, I don't even know if it needs to be drained. That's how much water I used in here. So let me move this back and turn that off. Let me put this forward. And I don't know that we need all of that for the chicken. And these are boiling nicely. They aren't done yet, but they look pretty good. I'm going to use a spoon. Stir that up a little bit. I don't like all that fluffy stuff that gets on chicken. Yuck. I don't even know what it is, but it's nasty. It might be done. I need some for the <clears throat> pasta. But I'm gonna leave them in there and cook just a little bit longer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the pasta and mix it with just a little bit of oil. what I will do is take, hmm, I want to put some of the pasta in a bowl because I don't think I'm going to need all of it for the chicken alfred. Oh, that's a lot of pasta, so. This is like going to be a whole bowl. <laughs> I might even be able to make two meals. I'm sure I will, so I might make something else, but I'll just put that there. Uh, maybe one more scoop. I want it to be about half. That looks like about half. So I'm going to go ahead and add my big jar of Prego Alfredo sauce to that. Because my family likes it kind of creamy. And I'm going to add a little bit of water to this to get all of the play out. So I add about, I don't know, an eighth of a cup of water. 
I'll shake this can up. Add that back in. Then you feel like you got your money's worth. My family also likes spinach. I'm going to add some chopped frozen spinach to this. And I'm adding almost the whole bag, but you know, spinach goes a, a little bit of spinach, like fresh spinach doesn't make a lot, but the frozen spinach a little bit kind of goes a long way. So, oh yeah, this is looking good. Nice and creamy. because they're gonna bake this and you want it to be extra creamy with it baked too. And then I'm gonna add some chicken to that as soon as I know that that's done. So that's what that looks like right now. And when the chicken's done, I will cut that up a little bit and I will add it to this and then that meal will be done. And then I'm going to use this bowl for my chili. Um, well actually I'll probably make all of the chili in here and I'll put half of it in a zippy for Alex and or however much in a zippy for Alex and then I will um, leave the rest in this bowl to cook. So that being said, what can I do next? Let's go ahead and assemble the uh, chicken pot pie. So I will take you back to the table and we'll get that going. Okay, so for the chicken pot pie, you need a pie pan. I'm using a disposable one just to make it easy for my kid. And then I need a bowl to mix everything in. I'm going to put a little oil around the pan so that the pasta shell won't <coughs> um, stick. And I'm using the ready-made pie crusts. This is a super easy meal and it is so good. Everyone I know loves it that I've made this for. And it was a little lady in Louisville when I used to live there that taught me this recipe. So I'm just taking the bottom pie shell, and this is the kind of pie shell I always use, but I'm sure that you could make your own or whatever you like. And you just spread it out. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And I just like to push it up against the sides. And there we go for this minute. I'm going to take my fork and just put a few holes in the crust. That's kind of fun. I don't know why that's fun for me, but it is. So I'm going to put that to the side. And then I'm going to take my bowl. Oh, and I need a can opener. So this couldn't be easier, really. to take my can of cream of mushroom soup and I'm just going to open this and it could be a can of cream of chicken, cream of mushroom, cream of celery, whatever you like. Heck, I even think there's a cream of potato soup. You could use that if you wanted to. Dump that into my bowl. See there's another mushroom in there. Get out all of it. I'm also going to take my chicken breast and I don't know why this, when I first learned this recipe it was with the um, canned chicken and so I've always used it but you don't have to but I really like the canned chicken I'm gonna take just a little bit of the liquid and put it in just like that and then the rest of the liquid I'm going to pour into the soup bowl because I don't need that And then I'm going to add all of that chicken. And then you have to open the can of veg all. And I have a Pampered Chef can opener. I know that people have asked before what kind of can opener this is. I got it from Pampered Chef. It's nice because it doesn't leave a sharp edge. And uh, 
if you have kids or whatever, they can't get cut by the lid. So I've had this for years and years. And vegol, if you guys aren't familiar with vegol, it is just mixed vegetables and it just comes in a can. So it's like a can of vegetables, but it's all different kinds. And again, the recipe called for vegol when I first learned how to make it. And that is what I use every time. I'm sure that you could use just vegetables and, you know, frozen vegetables or however you like them, but you do need to drain this. My soup can is full. And then you just add that. And then you mix, and I'm gonna add some salt and pepper just to taste. As Emerald says, I don't know where you come from, but where I come from, things don't come seasoned. <laughs> Hopefully the pepper won't catch me this time. We really like pepper, so I might use more than the average bear. And I also kind of clump up or unclump the uh, chicken because it does kind of clump up in the can. And you want to mix it really good. And you can freeze this, or you can just leave it in the refrigerator and cook it when you're ready. Or you can just cook it immediately, which is what I usually do, but because I'm doing meals for my kid, he can have those options, and so can you if you want to do this for your kid, or for you even. It's great to have meals ready that you just come home to and just have to put in the oven. You don't have to put any thought into it. You don't have to get anything dirty. You just, you know, do it. Some people did ask that in one of my videos. Why would you even do that? These meals are so easy to make. Yeah, but you have to still make them even though they're easy to make. If you have them already prepared, it's just nice. Especially if you have a busy family, which I luckily, well, not luckily, it's not lucky anymore, but um, I have passed that season because it was fun when it was happening sometimes. Sometimes it was stressful, but you know, they always say you wish you had it back and th that is true. You do wish you had it back. But um, I don't have that anymore. My house is not the busy, busy bee house that it used to be. Now, honestly, I usually use a deep dish pie container. This might be too much filling for this little pie thing but I'm gonna try to make it work. I'm just gonna have to seal it really well and tell the kids to put it on a cookie sheet when they bake it. Oops. Luckily that was still in its package. <laughs> Cause that would be nasty. Drop the pie shell on the floor. All right, so I'm just going to put this on top And I'm going to pinch this and fold it and do that a couple of times just to hopefully keep all of that ooey juicy goodness inside. And then I'm going to cover the whole thing in foil. sealing this well that's what I'm that's my goal on this one my son loves this so he's gonna really be excited to have this and I don't even like pot pie like if you <clears throat> like if it's not homemade I'm kind of a snob with my pot pie which is weird but like I don't like the frozen pot pies that are so readily available and my kids love those too but um, I do not like those at all I didn't think I liked pot pie until I had this so this is the only pot pie that I like and it's so easy there we go that is done so I'm going to cover that with foil 
and um, that will be another finished meal. And I don't know if I told you guys, but I do have a sink full of hot water with soap, so it's easy to wash dishes as I go. So I'm gonna do that real quick, and I'll be right back. And I'm going to cover this in foil, so I just need to open my foil. And I know you guys know how to cover it with foil, so I don't really have to show you, but some of you might be interested. I don't know. And I do have a food saver. I decided not to use it this time. I think, unless I decide, unless I change my mind, but I don't think I have to have it for this food session. And then I'm going to take another piece of foil. This is why I thought I'd show you. And go the other way. Just to ensure that this is covered well. And I'm going to label it. Chicken. Pot pie. And there is our second prepared meal, ready to go. I brought you back over to the stove so we can check on this chicken. It is certainly done now, so. Let's see, I think I'm just gonna take my fork and put one. Two, three, four of them in here. And I'm going to take another fork. And I'm just going to kind of spread it apart. I'm not really shredding it, but I'm just making it into smaller pieces. You could cut it if you wanted to with your knife, but this was just handy. Now I haven't had this on, so this is cooled down now, except for the chicken that I'm adding. And I just need to decide if I want to put this in a foil or in a bag, and I think I'm gonna do a foil. Oh yeah, because it's a bake. Yeah, ding that. So it doesn't really matter if it's warm or not. I don't want there to be ch super big chunks because I want them to be able to have chicken throughout. big chunks I'm just unchunking them <clears throat> and I'm gonna have a bite of the pasta just to make sure it's good mm -hmm. oh that's fabulous they will like that for sure so another foil you know what I think I have enough to do too these. Look 
grab another foil and we'll see. And I'm gonna cook my chili in here and I'm just gonna leave this Alfredo and spinach in there. I don't really care. I could wash it, but honestly, it might even be good that way. So there's two of those. That's awesome. So to this, I'm going to add my chili. So let's go ahead and get that on. Let me move this. And I'm not going to turn the pan on. I'm just going to make it because I'm going to put some of it in a bag for Alex. So hopefully this pan is even big enough for all the chili fix that I'm going to have. If not, I can add the... Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'm thinking out loud. Okay, so I'm going to wash this because I'm going to cook some sausage in here next for the lasagna. So I want to wash that pan. Because I don't want the lasagna to be chili flavored. Okay, so to this, I need to add, let me get my um, can opener. large can of diced tomatoes. And I'm not draining it. So this is ooh, 28 ounces and also 20, 30 ounces of chili hot or chili mild beans. These are from Brooks. As I said before, these are my favorite. And I don't drain these either. Stir this up. I like to serve my chili with either Fritos or oyster crackers and cheese and sour cream. How do you like your chili? Doesn't that look good? So then I have two more cans of chili ready tomatoes and this is the Great Value brand. I know that Red Gold sells them too, and that's the brand I've used before, but I figured, hey, why not? Because I do like my chili tomato-y. And I think I can go ahead and put another can in here. So the chili is done, I just need to put it in bags, so. I happen to have a hand dandy bag holder. my frozen or one of my uh, freezer things this is, it doesn't have a surface anymore I'm just making sure I don't want to melt my handy dandy so I'm just opening the freezer bag and putting it in here so that this will hold it so I can scoop my chili into the bag and it will stay open 
trying to stir around that. Now I will add salt to this, but I don't know if the kids will want to, so I'm not going to add any salt to theirs. And sometimes I even add noodles. This is not a very big spoon. I need a ladle. Where's my ladle? Oh, here's one. Trying to figure out how much would be a serving or a meal. Because that's quite a bit. And I should have labeled my bag first, but I didn't. But okay, so there's one bag of chili. I just closed it. I haven't actually sealed it yet, but. And I think I can do another bag. It might not be as big as the first. And still have enough for us in here. I might even tell them to add a little bit of water if they want to, because I can see how that would maybe be. It would make it go a little longer. Or a little further, I mean. Yeah, I think that's good. I think that's enough chili for us to have for tonight. And gives them two meals of chili. Okay, so I'm going to pause you guys for a minute. And I'm going to clean up just a little bit because i got some stuff on my stove. And I want to get this cleaned up and wash a few of the dishes. And then I'll be back. Okay, I'm not quite done with my dishes, but I'm going to go ahead and brown the uh, sausage. So, let me open this up. Turn that on again. sausage in there. So we can start to brown while I'm finishing up the dishes. All right, so that's that. All right, once that gets browned, I just need to chop it or to make it into small pieces. This little thing is handy dandy. You can get them at Target. Um, someone said they saw them at the Dollar Tree. You can get them at uh, Pepper Chef. Lots of different places, just look for them. Okay, I am going to add, I'm just going to use my fingers, a little bit of this ground turkey. Not much because I want to use the rest for my tater tots, so just a little bit. And that's totally not necessary. I can just have an Italian sausage. Then I'm going to take my large thing of 
prego. I'm going to add at least half of it. I need to switch to a spoon. and some garlic. And about a half an onion to that, and then I'm going to use the other half for the tater tots, I think. Ah, eh, I'm gonna use the whole onion. I still have another package of this I can use for the tater tots. And just a time check, it is 11.40. I don't even know what time we started. I should have paid attention, but I didn't. And I'm going to add some minced garlic, and this is just something that I have on hand. And I'm going to say at least two cloves of minced garlic, but I just eyeball it and pour some in. And I want it to be a little saucier. So just to whatever you like to taste. Sorry about that. You guys may have seen some of the floor or something. I'm not sure. Oh, and I was going to add the spinach to the cheese layer too. So I'm just adding the leftover spinach. This is totally optional. But because I had it, I don't want it to go to waste. going to add, I have a big thing of ricotta cheese. It was just cheaper to buy this big one than it was to buy the, I mean it wasn't less expensive, but the price was crazy different per like ounce or whatever if I bought the big one. I'm trying to find the edge. No, like easy pull spot it doesn't seem and I really don't know if we'll use all of this I was kind of thinking that what we don't use we could use in the tater tots just because totally not necessary but yummy cheese. I'm going to use about a cup of that, maybe a little less. But... And I need to use some mozzarella cheese, of course. about a cup of that in there and then I will use more for sure and I also need an egg I forgot to grab one I also had that on 
hand. I didn't buy eggs today. some Italian seasoning would be good too. Is really getting me today. I don't know why. I did tell you I'm brand specific for some things, and I love the Pinsy's World's Best Pepper. That's what's in there. It's like really peppery and really good, and that's probably why it's getting me. Worth it. All right, so there's our cheese layer. The noodles are ready. We just need the meat layer. And I think I'm just gonna bring the meat layer over here. Try it that way. Move you guys a little bit. First thing you need to do is put a little bit of sauce on the bottom of the pan. And I'm making kind of small pans, but you know, small portions. Hmm, how's the best way to do this, you think? I'm going to spread this out on the bottom of the pan. And I might even bring that sauce over here. And just add a smidge to each one. Just to make sure. You don't want to put the noodles flat on the bottom because if you did they would burn. So you need to have a layer of sauce down first. And then we will do a layer of lasagna noodles. And these aren't going to fit so I'm just going to break it in half. And if it overlays a little bit, that's all right. You just don't want it to be completely overlaid. Otherwise, they'll just stick together and it will be kind of crummy. Hopefully you can see how I'm doing this. to do a layer of the cheese mixture. This 
So the way I like to do it is I like to start and end with sauce. cheese in each one of them still but that's okay put cheese on the other side and you do want it to I mean you want to get at least two layers in your lasagna One layered lasagna would be kind of weak, wouldn't it? <laughs> My opinion for sure, but still, you want it to be layered. Then I'm gonna take a nice size scoop of my sauce, pour that down. And spread that out. And then I am going to take, just for added cheese, <laughs> just add, sprinkle a little layer of cheese on. I'm not talking much, but you know. <laughs> and then I'm going to add another layer of noodles. These ones are not crack a as easily as the first ones I did. Well, maybe it was just those few. Of them just really go crazy, don't they? So I have that, so then I'm going to do a layer of cheese. When they're all broken up like that, they want to stick to the cheese. No, you can't do it. This is going to be the end of the cheese mixture. So, I need to make sure I get it all. And you do want to make sure, especially with these no-cook lasagna noodles, that you get sauce all over the noodles because that's how they bake from what I understand. Or that's how they cook, is that they use the heat and the sauce liquid to cook. So get it to the end, to the edges. And I think with this, I'll give Chloe and Alex two of them, and then I'll save one for Dennis and me. We like lasagna. Do you like lasagna? I'm 
Okay, and that's a total mom thing that I just did, and you guys might not approve. You be you. Do what you need. All right, so now I'm going to do more sauce. And again, I'm going to make sure that I get sauce all the way around. And don't worry, we're going to top with mozzarella cheese, too. So I said we started and ended with the sauce, but I guess you technically you start and end with the cheese. Well, you end with the cheese. But I meant in the layers. And I never use a whole thing of lasagna noodles. I don't know if I don't put enough noodle or what, but... I never use it all, so I either have leftovers and then I can um, combine them to make a full lasagna, or I have, um, I throw it away. I know, I know. I'm getting all this saucy goodness out. And I do have more sauce if I want to add more sauce, but I think I'm going to be okay. I'm just getting it all out. All right, and then we're going to top these with mozzarella cheese. And this time I'm going to use a big handful. We like cheese. All right, so now I just need to label those, wash my dishes, and I will be back. So I'm only going to label two of these because one is staying here and I will know what it is. So I'm just going to close this up and then these meals are done as well. Yay, we're making good time, I'm thinking. I'm feeling it. I am tired though. I'm feeling this too, for sure. It's a lot, especially when you shop on the same day. But I didn't really have room in the, frigor in the refrigerator for everything, so I didn't want to have to have to clean out my refrigerator and put everything, you know, all the groceries in it just to get them all out to show you guys. So I thought, you know what, for me this time it's easier just to do it all in one day. But I think I said one of the last times that I wouldn't do that again and that that's not the way I recommend and I don't know it kind of depends I guess you know what you need if you have room for everything then sure it would be great to do the click list there are those meals ready to go so what's next let's see so next I'm going to slice up this meat for the um, beef and broccoli so you can even buy it already sliced which I did contemplate but it was way more bang for my buck if I bought this so I thought I would buy this now raw beef isn't as nasty to me as raw chicken I don't know why it's all pretty nasty I don't know if I got the right knife for this or not. Oh, it doesn't feel like I did. 
Uh, let me get a different knife. This one ought to do it. <laughs> I'm cutting into thin strips because that's how we like it. You could do chunks. It's kind of fatty. Heck. I'm like tearing it up too. I don't know. This must not be the right knife either. This isn't a how-to video. This is more of a this is what I do video. middle-class America. You can do this too. <laughs> I don't know. Let me try this one again. This one doesn't even want to cut there. So anyway, this is about a pound of meat. I guess I can just do this recipe next. I'm gonna do it on this stove. And if you make all of the slices about the same, it'll cook evenly. So I'm trying to do that too. awful at picking out meat so maybe this wasn't a good choice either I don't know okay there we go that is going to be good so I will take you back over to the stove and I'll show you what we're gonna do for this okay I'm going to heat this up and then I'm going to add some olive oil which our sesame oil which I actually had on hand too. You could use olive oil, but I like the sesame oil with this. And I'm going to get out my other ingredients. Do, do, do. I need to look to see what I need. starch I want about two tablespoons of sesame oil and I want that to get warm and I need some cornstarch
that took me entirely too long, but I found it. it smells fragrant with the sesame oil. So you're gonna want three tablespoons of cornstarch, the steak slices, soy sauce, brown sugar, garlic, um, broccoli, and onion. And then you serve it with rice. So that's what one of those rice packages is for for him, the jasmine rice. So I'm gonna use the broccoli. I'm just going to take a cup and I'm going to add my cornstarch to that. Two tablespoons of cornstarch. And three tablespoons of water. And then you just want to mix this up. tenderizer to this. I'm going to add a little bit of meat tenderizer to this. Oh gosh. It's telling me I have a low battery. Of course I do. Just because this meat doesn't seem like it's very tender. I guess that means I'm going to have to take a break and charge my battery after I'm done with this which sounds pretty okay with me. Get a second wind and do some more. So cornstarch is a thickening agent. Mixing it with the water first. I need to find my dart or my ginger. I know I have some. Oh, there we go. I also need to get out my brown sugar. So, when the meat is almost cooked, which is about now, we can go ahead and add this cornstarch mixture. And I just want to mix all of this together. So 
now I'm going to add I'm going to add about a half of a cup of soy sauce. Oh, helps if you have it opened already. Good. I'm going to make sure nobody gets into that for sure. I want to add about three tablespoons of brown sugar. These little bare things don't seem to work. You guys might not know what I'm talking about, the brown sugar bears. You're supposed to soak them in water and then put them with your brown sugar and it's supposed to help keep it soft. But I have three of them in there. <laughs> and you saw how hard that was to open up or to get in and out. And I think that's it. Let's see. Oil, ginger, garlic, brown sugar, soy sauce. So that is that. I'm going to taste the sauce and make sure it's good. And if you wanted to add more broccoli to it, you could, but that's enough for two people for sure. I think I'm going to put this one in a bag. We'll see. I'm going to let it cool though. So let me try this sauce. Mmm, that is really good. Yeah, I like that. All right, I think that they will like this. <sighs> I'm going to turn you guys off for now and plug you in and get cleaned up and turn this off and then we can bag this up and start on our next one bye guys for now oh and just a time tap check it's 12 18. all right so it is 1 41 i took a bit of a break had some lunch Whew, watched some tv had a cup of coffee feel a little more refreshed i have my bag labeled with beef and broccoli and this has just been sitting here, so it is. I should probably put my bag holder, but oh well, I'm not clearly. I put it away already. some rice or they can have some noodles with it or you could serve 
you could just eat it like this and then maybe serve egg rolls with it or whatever. However you decide you like it. I'm trying to get all the ooey gooey goodness. And I did go ahead and fill my sink up with hot soapy water again. But I'm going to let this let some water run into that. Okay, so here is another meal done and Let's go to the island now. All right, there are a couple easy things to just put together, so let's go ahead and do that. My Italian sausage is pretty easy to put together. I am going to dump the leftover spaghetti sauce in this bag. I think I threw the lid away crazily. So I'm going to put a little bit of water in here. and mix it around the best that I can. And get as much of that yummy sauce out as I can. I'm gonna add some of the Actually, I'm going to add all of these peppers and onions to this because I have a whole nother vegetable stir fry that I want to use. So I'm going to add all of these peppers and onions to this. And I'm going to add the whole thing of Italian sausage. This is really easy to put together. It'll be really easy for them to cook. All you need to do for this is to put it in a crock pot and let it cook all day for about eight hours on low and serve it with on hoagies with some mozzarella cheese. I'm going to toss this. So that's what I got the sliced mozzarella for. So that's for them. I'm going to take the air out. is ready to go. All right, then, oh, I need to give them this too. The cheese goes with that and the hoagies. So I'm gonna throw this away. And I'm going to get a knife. Let's see, I might use one of these knives. And you know what, I have that ragu left over. I didn't even use this because I was gonna use this for the Italian seasoning, but I don't need to. But I do have some pasta. I could make some just pasta for them. Now, these roasts are, like I said, I think they're really good. And it comes with its own seasoning. And this brand is Tyson. And it comes with seasoning, which I really like. Um, and, I don't know. I think I need to get out my cutting board. Let me grab my cutting board real quick. actually looks like it's already in two pieces maybe which is 
handy dandy. And it looks like it's got some juice in it, which I don't like. So I'm gonna take it to the stove real or to the sink real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, so it didn't have two pieces, it's still just in one. So I'm going to cut it about in half and open up a bag that I've labeled with roast. I'm just going to put that in there and I'm going to Use about half of this seasoning in this roast. And I'm going to shush it around that meat. And I'm going to leave that to the side and then I'm going to take this so the meat that's left. I'm going to cut off the fatty parts. And then I will just cube up the rest. cutting off the fat and then cubing the rest. I think I said that already, but I feel like I'm sitting here not talking, so I feel like I have to say something. <laughs> Yuck. I mean, if you like the fat, I guess you could leave it on there. I know some people really like it, but I do not, and my family does not, so. I don't know if you can hear that, but that is my poor dog. He has some sort of cough. He's on medicine. They think he has a bacterial infection that just flares up sometimes. Well, I guess they don't think he does. He does. This meat is a lot better than like that that steak I had for the beef and broccoli. Ugh, I hope that's a decent meal because that steak was kind of weird. Hard to cut and looked like it might have been fattier than I'd want for sure, but oh well. So this is all yuck. Okay, I'm gonna wash my hands even though I'm gonna get them dirty again. So I'm going to add all of this to that. Ugh. And my hands are yucky, but that's okay. I'm just going to cut up the vegetables for the stew and for the roast. So for the roast, I'm making it a little bit chunkier. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to use all of that for the roast, and then I will use some chopped onion for the stew. I can use that one for the stew. Let me get it real quick. There we go, that's good. And I'm just gonna take the potatoes. For the roast, I'm going to just quarter them.
smaller ones I'm putting in the stew. Again, if I had the thing holding them, it'd probably be a little better, but I don't have it out, so I'm not going to do that. And then the carrots for the roast, I'm just going to put in there like this. And then the carrots for the stew, I will... I'm going to add the rest of the seasoning to from the roast to the stew. I know that that's probably kind of weird. And if I was just making stew, I wouldn't add roast seasoning. But because I have it, I'm just going to add it. And to the stew, I'm also going to add some green beans and some corn and a can of tomatoes. So let me drain these. This is just a small can of corn and a small can of green beans. You don't like can? Use frozen. If you don't like these vegetables? Use what you want. Use beans or um, you could use like lima beans or whatever. Another can of carrots might be good. Um, oh yeah, tomato. can of um, stewed tomatoes that I just had and so I'm going to use those and I'm not draining this I'm just going to add it right to it Smush all this together. Well, not smush it, but put it all together. Now they're going to need to add some water to this, or some beef broth would actually be best. And I have beef broth for them. And I will tell them that they need to add that. But there is their beef stew. And here is their roast. Move this all around. And they will need to add some water to the roast as well. And I hope I put that on their directions. I need to check real quick. Let's see. Yes, I did. But I don't even have the beef stew in their directions, but I need to. So those are done. So what's left? We have to put together the tater tot casserole. We're getting done, guys. Yay! So let's put the tater tot casserole together. Let's add some onion to this bowl. I'm just going to add what's left because I don't want to save it. And 
let's add a thing of sour cream. Actually, I only need about eight ounces, I think, and this is a 16 ounce container, so. And then a cream of chicken or cream of mushroom. Again, it's whatever cream of soup you want to use. Stir that together. I have two cans of soup just in case, but I might not need to. some bacon bits and I like to use the real bacon bits or make your own but honestly these were cheaper than even making them myself so I use about an ounce of that just bacon bits just crumbled bacon where I'm going to add the rest of that turkey, ground turkey or chicken or beef or whatever you want to use. about a cup of cheese in the dish so that's like a nice handful and I'm using the Fiesta blend so I'm using yellow cheese as opposed to like mozzarella and then I have frozen hash browns or tater tots and I'm going to get my dishes together So I'm just going to grease, I think, three of these to get them prepared. And then I add the tater tots. Let's hope I can do this without making too big of a mess in this bowl. tater tots are frozen mine have gone out pretty much from being out all morning but um when they're frozen there's a little easier to not mush although I mean it's a casserole so it's not a huge big deal if they get a little mushed all of my surfaces are clean I cleaned them all before I started and you just want enough sauce to kind of coat the tater tots and this actually looks like it worked out pretty well I don't need the extra can of soup or more sour cream I think that this will be fine I'm 
just putting this in the casserole. This too might be enough. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not. I'm going to wash my hands real quick because I think I can lift that bowl up now. It's not too heavy. Not too heavy and not too full. And then having the sink full of soapy hot water makes it easy to clean up. Just put that there. Spread this out in my container a little bit. I'm gonna to top them with cheese. And then my bun, and they will be good. Extra cheese. I know my son won't mind that. So we might need a little bit more. And we have a system where he tells me if it's one star, two star, or three star, so he's going to have to tell me how they turned out. Now I am going to also spray the top of these after I put them on just because that cheese is, so this is hash, brown, casserole. I'm going to put smileys just to keep up with what I've been doing. And I'm just going to take my sprayer and spray the tops of these. All right, and then just need to seal it up. So it really is easier if you cook or brown your meat first. That way you can just assemble stuff. If I had to do this for every one, it would be a huge pain. So this is freezer meals from start to finish. I hope you enjoy them. I know my son will. So there's those two. Done. So what do we have left? I have a can of cream of mushroom soup left over. All right, I have, what else is on the list? Um, I know chicken fajitas, or not chicken fajitas. Well, yeah, chicken, chicken fajita rice cake. And that might be the last thing that I have to do. Let me check my meal. Meals, chicken bacon ranch. Oh, roasted broccoli, I have to do that still. Um, chili, chicken alfredo, Italian sausage, lasagna, beef with broccoli, tater tot casserole, roast, chicken pot pie, and fajita bake. So I still need to do the fajita bake. Goodness, we are almost done, guys. So let me get the freezer bags. And right on here, roasted broccoli. even though it's not roasted yet, but 
broccoli. I need some garlic. Parmesan cheese, that's what I'm looking for. Um, I don't know. Yes, I do. Oh, is that Parmesan? Yes, it is. This is how I like to do my roasted garlic, or roasted broccoli. Roasted vegetables, pretty much. Lace on my sweatshirt. Well, I should have put it in the bag first. Oh, I guess I did open the bag, or it was opened. I just closed it. Take my broccoli. Put it in the bag. That's enough for two. And then I'm going to take about a tablespoon or so of oil and about a teaspoon of minced garlic or a little more. <laughs> that was a little more. And then about a fourth cup of Parmesan. Should do it. Also add salt and pepper, but I'll leave that to the kids. And I gave them instructions on how to roast this, but that is that. Easy peasy, lemon squiggly. And let's go ahead and make the roast um, chicken bake. I don't even remember what, how to do that or what that's called, but I'm going to use fajita seasoning. And I have these chicken tenders. I'm going to just go ahead and break them apart. They have cooled. And I'm just going to break them in the bowl that they were in. I actually have that pasta over there, but I don't know if I want to use this big, huge thing of ragu. I don't think I want to open that yet. So I may see if I have any spaghetti sauce in the cupboard. And if I don't, I may just put the noodles in a bag and um, tell them to serve it with butter. I mean, I like buttered noodles. I think that's what I'm going to do. Because I know that Alex isn't crazy about the red sauce. He likes the Alfredo sauce, but I already did those chicken Alfredo with that, those same noodles. So, yeah. So, here's that. Let me get out the instructions on how to do this bake real quick. La la la. Where is it? Beef broccoli, chicken fajita rice bake. Okay. Green pepper. I'm going to use these stir fry vegetables that I had already. So I'm going to use that. And honestly, with this one, it says that you put the rice in the casserole dish and you bake it where it's not done, and then when you're done, it will be done. So what I think I'm gonna do, I don't wanna prepare it necessarily because the, it's very gooey when you put it in. Huh, what can I do? 
I think instead of, I'll tell him to make rice on the side and I am going to use this and get this ready. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, I'm gonna leave it in here and I'm going to put this fajita seasoning mix and I'm only gonna use about half of it, I think. This says one pound of boneless sirloin or flank steak. You know what, I'm gonna use it all. Might be better in a bag. Hmm. Oh well, I'm gonna just do it in here. And then I'm going to open this up. Ugh, I can. These are from Trader Joe's, and it's super handy because it's like all of the vegetables all together already cut up and ready to go. This one has onion, like those cute little corn, mushrooms, peppers, broccoli. It's got it all, and I'm gonna use probably half of it in here. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of water to this. just to give that fixins a little something to fix in. All that seasoning. Now it will get waterier as it bakes because these vegetables have water in them. So what I think I'm gonna do is just pour this in and then whatever spice is left in the container, I'll add a little bit more water and pour it in. So I'm gonna pour this into here. gonna try to lift up all of that seasoning or most of it. I don't think I can get it all. Some of it's stuck on there pretty good. And then I'm just going to pour this over the top. And I don't think that'll make it too runny. And then before they bake it, I'm gonna tell them to add the rice and chicken broth. So let's get that out. We are almost done, folks. This is a cup of rice and one cup chicken broth. And I'll put here or water in case they don't have the chicken broth, even though I'm giving them chicken broth. You know, they're kids. And then they're made to bake. So I'm going to say thaw first. And I'm going to tell them to bake it at 375 degrees 
for 15 minutes. And I'm going to spray the top of that too. Even though I'm not topping it with cheese. So there's enough vegetables left there for me to make something for my husband and I. So I will show you guys what's left after I'm done with everything. And then I'm going to take one of these and I'm just going to say buttered noodles. noodles from earlier. And try to get them in there without making a mess. Go in there, go in there. Goodness. I have a feeling, yeah, I thought it would just do that. Which is fine. I'm not going to push it up. In here. And then I will take some butter. buttered noodles without butter. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to put this over here. And I need one more pan. the shrimp dip. So I'm going to get the pan ready. I'm going to get this cleaned up a little bit and I'll be right back. Before I make this last one, I'm going to show you what I have left. So I have um, half of these Asian stir fry vegetables, half of the sour cream, a full thing of ragu, a full of broccoli, about a fourth of the mozzarella, and about half of the Fiesta cheese. And I still have about half of the ricotta. I haven't made any of the desserts. And I don't think I'm going to. I think I'll just include them in the box and they can make those, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna get started with this in just a second when we put this away. All right, let's see. So for this, I have a cream cheese that has come to room temperature. This is super easy and it is so good. We serve it with tortilla chips. That's not quite soft enough, so what I'm going to do is put this in the microwave for about 30 seconds. And while that's in there, I'm going to make sure this is opened. I have never tried this particular brand, or off-brand, I guess. Mmm, it's good. It's like 
served in my opinion at room temperature but um, if you like it cold you can chill it too. I'm going to add about eight ounces of cocktail sauce and if I need to add more I will. So I'm just going to stir this around. So it's a whole block of cream cheese. Did, I may have said sour cream. Sorry if I did. A whole block of cream cheese and eight or ten ounces of cocktail sauce. And you just want to get most of the lumps and bumps out of the cream cheese. If it bugs you, use a whisk or a blender or a mixer. Honestly, it doesn't bother me much. This is a 11 ounce container, so I don't know, maybe I'm using six to eight ounces. Looks like I used about half of it, and that looks about perfect. And then I like to use the extra small shrimp. You can use whatever size you want, but if you use a bigger one, you probably need to cut it up. And I'm going to start with about half of this container because this is a 12 ounce container. And I usually use smaller ones. So, And this is already cooked and peeled and deveined, which is part of the reason why I like this kind. But you know what? I'm going to just add it all. Ooh, I probably shouldn't have added that water. Yuck, let me try to get that out. All right, I did pretty good. And you can bake this if you want to. That would be good, I would imagine. But we just like to serve it with tortilla chips, just like this. And then I'm going to put it down into this container. And that is that. So I will write on here, shrimp dip. And this is the last of the meals. Yay. And it is 2.35. So what I'm gonna do is get all of the meals together on the island, and show you guys what all we made and try to package them up a little bit. And it's cold outside, so I might just set these on the porch or maybe just go ahead and put them in my car. That's what I'll do. And wash this up and get cleaned up and I'll be right back. Okay guys, this is all the meals. So let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five. I'm kind of not, this is one, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Is that right? Plus I have two more. So 19, I'm gonna count again just to be sure. Chicken pot pie, chicken bacon ranch, shrimp dip. One, two, three. Italian sausage, four. Beef and broccoli, five. Two things of chili, six and seven. 
a roast, eight, beef stew, nine, roasted broccoli, hash brown casserole, times two, 10, 11, buttered noodles, 12, chicken fajita bake, 13, two lasagnas, 14 and 15, two chicken alfredos, um, 16 and 17, a chili for us, that's 18, and a lasagna for us, that is 19 meals, guys. Whew, we did it. So now I'm going to pack them in some bags and get them ready to take to my son. And then I still have some like condiments for him. And well, let's just go ahead and pack it. That way, if I have anything that I need to tell you, I can tell you. So I'm just, I just have a brown paper bag. Left over from the reuse from Trader Joe's. So two hash brown casseroles, two lasagnas, chicken fajita bake. I can put the noodles down the side. I can put the broccoli down the side. And I will put the chicken pot pie on top. So there's that one. Ready to go. I have another bag here. I'm going to put the chicken alfredo in this. shrimp dip and the beef stew the roast the beef with broccoli and the chili the Italian sausage still, but I was thinking for that Italian sausage, so they won't use this for other stuff, and I have these big old bags. and the hoagies will all fit in this bag. Oh, I hate to put it on top because it's very heavy. I'm just, I think I might get a third bag. condimenty things in it. I have soy sauce and crackers. So I have soy sauce and crackers and jasmine rice and then those little extras that I showed you guys earlier. So I think, whoops, I think that I am done. Wow! We did it! We did it, we did it, we did it! So, I don't know what time we started, but it is 2.44 right now, and I am going to just take this out to the car and be done. So, hope you guys have a wonderful day. Hope you enjoyed this. <sighs> it is a lot of work, so I will do it again. I just don't know when. So, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so it is the evening now. It is 
6 o'clock. I haven't been to Alex's yet, but I hopefully will be leaving soon. I made myself a bowl of chili. I put a little dollop of sour cream and a little bit of cheese and some salt. And I'm just stirring it up. And I want to see how it tastes. Very good. You guys will like it.